Hey, it's Pete. Welcome back to my workshop. This week, I'm continuing on with the restoration work on the turret tailstock for my claws in Colchester lathe. What I want to try tackling this week is to see if I can reproduce the machine tag that sits on the back of that turret. It's a small little metal tag. It says Enco Manufacturing, and it has the original serial number of the unit. Uh, it's really messed up, and I don't think I can restore it, so we're just going to try to make a new one. I got an idea how I can do that here in the shop, or at least make a reasonable facsimile, and I have one special specialized piece of equipment that I think is going to make that happen. So let's get right into it. So I started the process off by creating the artwork for the tag. I imported a picture of the machine tag into Photoshop and then began uh, drawing the various elements of the tag right there. I'm not going to go into a deep explanation of uh, how Photoshop works. But the important takeaway here that I found is to start with an image as large as possible. This image actually measures over 26 inches across. And what that allows me to do is I do my tracing. The final thing I do is I resize it down to an inch and 15 sixteenths. And then all of my tracing errors become so small that they just don't matter. Uh, so after resizing, we turn off all the background layers and we're left with just the artwork for the tag, which I then go and export as a PNG file, which is something my printer can accept. I sourced a piece of aluminum from Lowe's. It's uh, 20 thou thick. It's a pretty good match for the original. And I just laid the tag on there and I scribed around it. Uh, I don't have a shear in my shop and I thought uh, about maybe using tin snips, but I didn't think I'd get a very clean cut out of that and uh, we'd, I'd have curling and things. So I thought maybe I could get away using my paper cutter. And uh, as it turned out, that actually worked pretty well. Uh, the pieces came out nice and flat uh, with no serrated edges. And uh, I don't think I'd want to subject this uh, poor little paper cutter to this type of use uh, continuously, but for one or two pieces, this worked out great. So I'm going to be printing directly onto this label. I'm hitting it with a bit of steel wool to give it a bit more tooth for the ink to stick to. And then uh, applying some double-sided tape, we're going to be taping it directly down to the flatbed printer. Now previously I've gone through and I've already printed the image on the bed. This gives me an alignment jig uh, to know where to put the tag down. So we just tape that in place. And then I'm going to hit it with a chemical called an adhesion promoter. Uh, it's provided by the ink manufacturer. I think it's literally just a degreaser to help the ink stick better. And then we just open up the artwork in our printing software. So this is our printer. It is a heavily modified Epson inkjet printer. And it began its life as an Epson L800, which is part of a series of printers Epson refers to as their EcoTank line. Uh, it doesn't actually have uh, individual ink cartridges, but rather it has a refillable reservoir on the side. This makes it uh, highly attractive as a printer to hack. So what has been done here is all of the existing ink lines, which are normally clear, are replaced with black. And uh, instead of using the reservoir, individual bottles of a UV curable ink are used. Uh, in addition to that, a UV curing light is mounted sidecar to the printer head, and it also has uh, water cooling lines run to it. So this causes the ink to cure as the head is going back and forth printing. Uh, another element of this printer is it also can print with white ink, uh, which is something you don't normally have in an inkjet printer. Normally the printer would uh, rely on the paper you're printing on to provide the white color. And finally, the paper feed mechanism has been removed and replaced with a flatbed. Uh, this particular printer was never sold in the US. It was intended for the European market, so it's an A4 paper size. Now my uh, UV curing light is starting to uh, wear out just a little bit. This printer is about four years old, so I always go ahead and I hit it with uh, some extra UV just to ensure that it cures. Now this is a two-pass printer. Uh, it prints first the white ink, and then you pull back the bed and start it again, and it lays the color ink down on top of it. And you see there at the top of the screen the uh, silver tube. Uh, that's a ventilation line that uh, takes the fumes outside. This ink has a very strong smell to it. This is not a uh, printer that you would want to have in your house. Also, there's normally a cover that goes over the whole top there that you don't see the entire mechanism like this. Uh, but this printer, unfortunately, does require a lot of maintenance. And uh, it's just easier to work on it without that lid in place. Normally, this printer is used in my shop to print the uh, legends and uh, logos and things on the electronic enclosures we manufacture here. 
So it's laying down the uh, red ink on top of the white. I think we got a pretty good match for the color. I'm liking the way it's turning out. I decided to go ahead and print the serial number in the Colchester uh, name directly on the label rather than uh, trying to stamp them or engrave them. I don't have stamps the right size. I could engrave it and uh, I may come back uh, at a later date and revisit this and actually um, make a version that doesn't have those on there and I'll put them on the CNC machine and actually engrave them. But this is uh, more or less a proof of concept for me to see if this is going to work out. And so far the results look pretty promising. So if you search online for DTS printer, which stands for direct to substrate, you will find some instructions how to build something like this. Or you can do what I did and go directly to eBay and buy one already done. Uh, brand new, they cost about $2,000, but uh, you can find used ones for cheaper. Just be forewarned, if you go the used route, you'll probably have to swap out the print head. And I just hit it with some uh, more UV light uh, to finish the curing process. And uh, that's that. So I'm really happy with how these came out. I made two of them, and uh, I, th I think they'll pass as a reasonable facsimile of uh, the original. One question I did have was exactly how uh, sturdy this ink is. So I decided to hit it with some Scotch-Brite just to see uh, if the ink would come off. And all it really did was uh, took the sheen off of the ink, and, and I kind of almost like that look a little bit. I could see some applications where that, that could be your final finish. Uh, but since this, the... Uh, scotch Bright didn't hit it. Uh, I, I took some sandpaper to it really to give it a test and uh, the, the sandpaper does take it off but I would expect the sandpaper to take it off a regular label. So overall I have to say I'm really pleased with how this turned out. I think I'm going to have to chalk that up in the win column and I think it's a process that I can continue to improve upon. It also gives me ideas for uh, other processes. I'm wondering if I can actually use the UV ink as a resist for etching. So in other words, take my original artwork and invert it and uh, print that as a resist, etch the tag and then strip the UV ink off to see if we could actually make a truly etched plate. Might be an interesting experiment. So as always, please like, share, subscribe, comment down below if you have any additional thoughts, and I will catch you next week.